Welcome back everyone, Energy Fabricator here. Um, I've been watching a few videos recently from a guy that goes by the name of Backup CPU and he's been playing around with the Arduino and it's given me a bit of motivation to pull this thing out which I've had sitting on the shelf in the box for nearly a whole year now. Um, I just haven't had the motivation to do anything with it and learn about the code and all that sort of thing. Um, so over the last week or so I've been doing a bit of research and decided to pull it out today and plug it in and upload some code. Uh, so this is by no means going to blow your skirt up or anything. This is quite a simple, the most simple test you can do on the Arduino. Um, I'll just zoom in here for you. So that's the Nano, the blue board there. And that's just plugged into this expansion shield which gives me more flexibility with more inputs and outputs and it's also got the benefit of the DC jack so I'll plug it in there's no off-board components or anything all we're using is the onboard LED as you can see it flashes quickly for a number of cycles then it slows down and then it slows down again um, and then it starts to speed back up and it will do that infinitely until the power is removed from the board so as I said not meant to be a very exciting project but I've plugged it in I'm pretty happy about that and it works now the main reason I started playing with this is because with the vacuum chambers that I'm building I've got a few of these gauges, uh, they're vacuum gauges with uh, KF25 flange fittings and they not only measure the level of vacuum but they also have a set point relay output so that when we get to a pre-selected level of vacuum we can actually output a voltage on one of these pins here and automate a process of our choice. Now I've got three of these gauges as you can see there there's two there and the other one is in parts. Um, I've taken it apart just to show you what's inside so that would be the gauge there uh, so that's going to actually connect to the vacuum chamber there. The pinouts for the gauge actually plug into this board here and the outputs inputs and outputs for the board are on the end plate and that sits in the main box here so what we would have in effect if that was plugged in was would be something that looks similar to that and that would be sitting inside the case that would be over the top of there like that um, so yeah I've got three of these because I thought that I would be uh, playing around with orthogonal field plasmas and things like that so I wanted to be able to ascertain what sort of vacuum level I'm getting on each orthogonal plasma and then be able to automate a process such as um, backfilling of gases into the chamber uh, but I wanted to be able to automate them with very precise preset parameters so that we can have repeatable experiments um, so yeah that's the main reason that I've got involved with the Arduino so I'm pretty happy that I've actually done something about this got off my ass and um, plugged it in so that's the first step the next step will be to do some more work on my vacuum chamber and actually be able to plug one of the gauges in and output the um, the vacuum levels into the Arduino and do a bit of data logging and then we can look at activating the set point relays to output a voltage signal which can automate a, um, a process whether it be 
backfilling of gases or shutting down a certain circuit or starting a certain pumping process or whatever. Um, I want to do it all through the Arduino, uh, but it'll, it will all be pre-plasma sort of stuff. Because um, once I get the high voltage plasmas going through the chambers, I don't think that the Arduino is going to be able to stand the um, the transient currents going through it. Um, not only that, but these circuit boards attached to the gauges will also be fried. And in a future video, when I can find it, I seem to have lost it. I blew up my um, laptop power supply, which wasn't even plugged into the wall uh, when I was doing my spark gap tests in my previous video. Uh, that thing just literally exploded um, and I can show that to you when I find it so I will find it and put it in the well video. I found the laptop power supply and if you look closely here you should be able to zoom you should be able to see all the burn marks around the top here and the discharges happen between this brown live input wire and the capacitor next to it here if we turn it around you can definitely see all the black burn marks around here this whole area was just black when I opened it up and I've already rubbed a lot of, lot of it off uh, but if we come in a bit closer you should be able to see the bits of track that's blown off here this one's completely blown across here uh, so there was a fair discharge inside this um, power supply here. Uh, keeping in mind the neon sign transformer that I was using had a, an input rating of 240 volts at about 2 amps and during my spark gap test I was running about 5 amps into it so well over 1 horsepower of energy being dumped directly into the uh, dielectric field. That's about all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and leave comments.